and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Now I'll start with a couple of announcements today, two or three things to tell you about. Uh, firstly, we've released a bonus video just this morning um, on how to solve GCHQ's Turing Challenge. This was um, something that got quite a lot of press attention here in the UK yesterday because there's a new £50 note featuring a picture of Alan Turing, no less, on it. And to commemorate that, GCHQ released 12 linked puzzles where they said it was their hardest challenge ever. Um, so Mark and I got together with our friend Neil and we spent a very enjoyable couple of hours yesterday morning solving it. And uh, many people, I think, got a bit stuck. So we've released the video. So do check out the Turing Challenge. I will try to remember to put a link under the puzzle, under this puzzle, so you can have a look at it. And if you get stuck, there is now a video showing you the secrets. Um, also, over the weekend, we're going to release another bonus video, and this is one I know a number of you are looking forward to. It's Jovial's video where he explains how he set the masterpiece Sudoku Syzygy. Uh, it's a puzzle that we solved on the channel about a week ago, and it is it is absolutely glorious. And it's, uh, it's actually something I really hope we get to do more on Cracking the Cryptic over the coming months, i.e. release videos which feature these magnificent setters where they talk through their thought processes and how they actually went about uh, constructing these masterpieces. So if you're watching this and you're a setter uh, and you fancy doing that, then I would be very interested in hearing from you. Um, also, oh yes, uh, this afternoon, this is why I'm recording the video slightly earlier today, uh, I'm going to be on a podcast, um, which is with Bram Cohen, the creator of BitTorrent, no less. Um, and it's a show called Hard Problems. Um, so I guess it will be available at some point somewhere. And if I if I if I remember to do this as well, I will put a link to that. Um, now, all of that said, what are we actually doing today in the video? We are going to solve this puzzle, which is called Pierced Cages, and it's by Frostini as he's known on Discord, but he's also known as Mark Sweep in real life. Um, and yeah, this has uh, been heavily recommended by Discord to us. And also Mark has solved this one. And uh, yeah, he described it as, uh, you've guessed it, approachable. And your guess is as good as mine as to what that means. It could mean it's relatively gentle. It could mean it's the most heinous puzzle in Christendom. Uh, the video length will probably give you a clue. Um, now, anything else to mention? Not really. Just look out on Patreon. We've obviously got all of the extra content over there. And we've got Demono's sequel puzzle to Everything is Roggen. That's the sequel to... Have I still got it open on my computer? I think I have. I may have. Yes, I have to do here. The sequel to this puzzle is appearing at the start of April. So look out for that. That will be... Well, it's an incredibly good puzzle. And we know a lot of you will enjoy it. Um, so, what are the rules of Frostini's puzzle? I will read them to you. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits in cages cannot repeat and sum to the small number in the top left corner of the cage. So, completely standard killer Sudoku rules. And digits along an arrow sum to the digit in the circle and may repeat if allowed by the other rules. So, completely standard arrow rules as well. So, basically, the way arrows work is you add up the cells that are on the arrow and whatever these add up to, you must put it in the circle. And you can repeat digits um, along an arrow if it doesn't break other rules. In fact, I've just noticed something quite interesting about that arrow there. Um, so I might not pick that one, <laughs> because that one I don't think can have a repeat on it. Um, but those two squares, I think they could repeat. Yeah, they could both be one, for example. That could be a five, that would make a seven here and that would be a valid way of constituting that arrow. These ones obviously are not breaking the rules of Sudoku, and that's why it's fine for them to repeat on the arrow. Um, and they're not breaking the rules of killer Sudoku either, so look out for that over there by the looks of things. Anyway, do have a go. The way to play, as usual, is to click the link under the video. Now I get to play. Let's get a cracking. Let's start right with this arrow, because I've just noticed this thing about it, which is, look, these two cells are in the same cage. So by the rules, they cannot be the same digit. Now this can't be the same as that and can't be the same as this because these are in the same column. So all three of these digits must be different. Therefore, the minimum we can put into them is one, two, and three. Ergo, this square is at least a six. And we have a little bit of a start. Um, so let's just have a stare at this. What else have we got? Have we got any other constrained arrows? We... That one, that one can repeat. 
this one. Uh, this one can repeat as well, actually, because look, those two squares could be the same. Um, and once you can have a repeated digit, the problem is that reduces um, the value of this circle because we can double one two the arrow, and that would allow us to go as low as four, which is quite a well. It's not as much of a, of a, oh, of a restriction as being able to limit it to just a high digit six seven eight or nine. Um, now what? 25 cage in the middle. That's a little bit interesting. We've got a sort of syzygy going along this diagonal because whatever those two squares add up to, we can just map that onto this square. Whatever those two squares add up to, we can map onto this square. So we actually know those three squares together add to 25. Um, now, sure if that matters or not I, I mean it does matter a little bit actually because of course you can't ever because I can't make this bigger than nine the maximum value of this arrow or these two cells in the in the cage is nine and the maximum value of those two squares again is also nine so those cells together have a maximum value of 18 which means this square has to be at least a seven and that's a little deduction um, and my phone was flashing at me but it stopped flashing now so I don't know what that is it's probably Mark ringing up to laugh at me and to find out whether I found this puzzle approachable or not um, oh okay go away um, the other thing about this just coming back to it is that it's not possible for these three cells to contain different digits because they add up to 25. So if we included different digits, the maximum I could make them add up to is 24 with 7, 8 and 9. So there must be a repeated digit. Yeah, there must be a repeated digit in this syzygy here. And it can't be, it can't be a double. These three squares cells can't all be the same digit because 25 is not divisible by 3, um, at least not into something that gives an integer. So exactly two of these digits are the same. Um, if that's nine, these two digits would still have to add up to 16. Right, okay, so the, these two actually also have to be high because if these two cells have to add up to at least 16 and they do, I can't put seven, or I can't put a digit lower than seven into either of them. I could put seven and nine, I could put double eight, but that means these are seven, eight, nine as well. So there is, it's not a triple because there's a repeated digit, but there is a, a sort of high effect along this diagonal. Ah, now I wonder whether if this is seven, these have to both be 9, and then you couldn't put a 9 anywhere in the 29 cage. And that, that is a red herring, sorry, that, does, that doesn't actually limit the 29 cage. I thought it might do, but no, look, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4 adds up to 30. So that's still fine. You don't have to have a 9 in the 29 cage after all. Um, Okay, so maybe this is not... May, I mean, maybe this is nothing to do with the break-in then. It's... Doesn't seem to be yielding, does it? Um, actually, look, those two squares... Ah... Yeah, okay, sorry. This this I think is far more interesting. I just didn't notice it at the start. This must be restricted. Because I can't make these squares any larger than eight. 
because if I do, well, if I put eight into those two squares, I can put one here and nine here. And that would just work for the 15 cage. But if these can't be any higher than eight, that's putting a lot of pressure on the other three digits of this 30 cage. Um, in fact, probably a better way of looking at this is to not is to not look at this arrow. It's to look at those three squares and ask what's the highest I could make those three squares. Highest I could make those three squares is 24 with 7, 8, and 9. So this these two squares have a minimum value of 6. Plus 1 here would be 7. So this square is at least 7. Oh, okay. I don't know why, I felt that was going to be more restricted than that. Uh, so I've managed to get quite a lot of squares down to 7s, 8s and 9s, but unfortunately I think there's not there's not much pre interdependent pressure on them. Two, three, four, five, ah! Ah, now that's interesting. This uh, L uh, tetromino here and this L tetromino here are a little bit restricted. I can't put 9 in here because then I'd have to put 1, 2 and 3 into the sort of the vertical stroke of the L tetromino. And these squares now would have a minimum value of 4, 5 and 6, which is 15. But we know this square can't be less than 6. So that breaks. Six. This would have to be at least. I'm not actually sure. Eight will work there, but definitely nine doesn't work. So this is not nine. Eight would put one, two, four here. Three, five. No. Ah, beautiful, beautiful. If this is one, two, four, the minimum value of this is three, five, six. Three, five, and six is fourteen. But I've used the six up. So I can't repeat it in the circle. So the minimum, if I go one, two, four here, the minimum I can put into these squares is three, five, six, and seven, which is 21. And 21 is greater than 20, and that is broken. And that's gonna actually give me a digit because now this square cannot be eight and is seven. There must be a one in these three squares because they sum to eight. Oh, better than that, better than that. This 7 forces this domino to be to add up to 6, because if it adds up to less than 6, let's make it 5, these three squares would have to add up to 25, which is impossible. So these add up to 6. This is a 1. These squares are a 7, 8, 9, triple. And we've got more 7s, 8s, and 9s. And these squares... Okay, so they're 2, 4, or 1, 5 in some order. We can get rid of the one here just because of the one here. We can get rid of the one here because of the, the one in row eight. Um, okay. So has that broken the puzzle open or not? These add up to eight. Um, not sure actually it probably has in a way that I can't quite appreciate um, this 7 does it actually see any of these other cells in some way I'm not sure that it does oh bobbins okay so let's have a look these add up to 8 I'm getting windy again here. Um, so what do we know about these squares? We know we know these squares can't add up to less than 13. And we know that because if we try and... What's the minimum I can make six cells in the same column add up to? 21. Because I could put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 into those squares. And that's adding to 21. It's a very good idea in Sudoku to get, have some sort of memory about all the triangular numbers. So if these are eight, these are at least 13, which means this can't be eight or nine. So this is six or seven. Uh, 
Oh, I see. Oh, this is lovely. Right, okay. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is the whole trick, isn't it? This cell limits this domino. This cell limits this domino in, a, in a, also a very high cage. Once these squares are limited, these are going to have to be high. Oh, that's, this is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. If that's a six, these two squares have to get to a value of five because the minimum I could put in these squares would be seven, eight, and nine. But now this is broken if I put six here because I go one here, these two add up to five. These squares are seven, eight, and nine. And what's this square? Uh uh, no value. So this is not six. This is seven. This must be one. This must add up to six. That allows me the latitude to go six, eight, nine here. This is therefore seven as well. So there's sevens everywhere. Not everywhere, but in two places. Um, uh, what else? These two squares are adding up to ah, that's nice. They're adding up to six, but they can't. Neither of these squares can be a one, so they're a two-four pair. And okay, good. What else can we do with this knowledge? We can. Oh, now, oh, beautiful. Right, now, I think I've done this puzzle in totally the wrong order, by the way. I think what I was meant to do was to start here, then go here, then realize this diagonal added to 25. I've, I've sort of done it all backwards because now it is very important to realize this diagonal adds up to 25 because this seven here forces those two squares to be double nine. And that's beautiful because the 29 cage now needs a nine in it that has to go here. And the 30 cage has to have a 9 in it, which has to not be in those two. It must be there. So there's a 9 down the right-hand side of box 9. There is... Uh, oh, maybe there isn't other stuff. Can that be a 9? If that's a 1, maybe. Not sure. Um, okay. Ah, yeah, okay. Now this is seven, because it can't be anything other than seven or the 29 cage broke. Now that means these are 13 and these are eight. 13 and eight is 21. So these squares, these six squares here, are the digits one, two, three, four, five, and six. And the six can't be in a total of eight there. So the six is up here. And these two squares are a seven, eight pair to complete the column. Ah, now we can think about the secret. What what does column uh, what does box five add up to? If we if we look at the finished solution to this puzzle and add up all the yellow squares, we'll get. Well, we know that the digits one to nine will each appear in the box. Add up the digits one to nine, you get forty five. Now look, those squares are twenty five. Those two are fifteen. So between them, that's forty we've dealt with. That means those two squares have to add up to five, which means they are either one, four, or two, three. Um, okay. Not sure. I mean, there's. I'm not sure I can eliminate any of the ways of making seven here, can I? Three, four. Two five one six. Three four isn't possible because that would break the ability to make those two squares add up to five. So it's not a three four pair. I will therefore notate that it's got to be one of those. Two, three four five six. Um. 
Okay. What now? This 10 cage is it's not 4 6 and it's not 3 7. So this is 2 8 or 1 9. And if it's 1 9, it must be in that that order. Uh, oh dear. <laughs> okay. So what do we do now? Um, these three squares add up to 11. I'm not sure we know anything about this arrow. Oh. Seven's over here. 7, 8 pair in row 6. Um, wow. Wow, I've, I've absolutely hit a brick wall here. 1 is locked into one of 3 places in box 2. These 3 squares add up to 10. can nearly lock one out. If, if this was a one or this was a one, that would then be very interesting because there's only um, one way of making three cells add up to ten if you can't use a one. It would have to be two, three, five. Ah, ah, can that be a one? Oh, bother. Bobbins, bobbins, bobbins. Yeah, it can be. I was thinking, I was thinking about this square and whether it could be a one. Um, and thinking, ah, that eliminates one from the arrow here. And then my brain went, ah, that's broken, therefore, because this would have to be two, three and four. And that would add up to nine, which would break. But my brain was not being sensible because actually on this arrow, you can repeat a digit. And if you can repeat a digit, it's not necessary for these to be two, three, and four. They could be double two. They could be double. Uh, they couldn't be double two and three, though. That would still break. But they could be double two and four. And that means this is nonsense, and we can't assume that this is not the one. Um, in fact, that would work in both those positions. Oh no, this, we can already rule out a one from this one. So sort of this two by two is a little bit interesting to me because these three have to be relatively low. I wonder if it's a good question to ask whether there's no one in there. Is it possible there's no one in there actually? That would be two, three, five. This would have to be a four. Four two two it might work. Does that work down there? Oh, sorry. I th I think there's there's going to be a better way of me working out what goes into these these cells. Um, these are adding to thirteen, so two of them are adding to seven. So this has got either two, five or three, four in it. Yes, which is the ca the complement to whatever's making the eight total here. Two, four. Two. Two, four. Ah, okay. That's really cool. Right, okay, let's use this domino. That This domino gives us an entry into this two by two. Because if this is a one five, if this, you can see it, if this is one five, the, the one would be here. Now that would pl plonk a one into this square in box three. If this is not one five, we know this is a two four pair. If this is a two four pair, what happens here? 
You cannot put 3, 5 on this arrow because this will become a 9 and that's too big. So there has to be a 1 in this domino and we can see that the 1 will be there. So we actually know now that in this box the 1 is either here or here and that that is lovely. That is actually lovely because if the 1 is here or here it's not there and that gives us a 1 here and actually it's going to give us the 10 gauge as well gives us no one here so this is not four this is not a one nine pair so this is two eight so it's not two there either so it's not three here either right and this is nice because now we ask the question where does the two go in column five it's got to go in the eight sum down here so this is one two five now which means this is three, four, six. And none of this is actually giving me digits, but it does feel like it's progress. Now those two square, ah, there's a digit. This nine has to go here. That's a five. Now this can't be two, five in the seven total. This is one, six, which gives us a two and a three to make sure these add up to five. The 2 does the 2 and the 4 in the 29 cage. The 2 does the 2 and the 8 in the 10 cage. Uh, the 8 gives us the 6 and the 8 in this cage. Oh, good grief. We're, we're cooking with gas here. We get the 8 and the 7. The 8 and the 7. These two squares are a 4-5 pair. These squares are a 6-9 pair now get rid of the ones in the corner of those squares and these squares are three, four, whoopsie, uh, three, four and eight, I think. This four fixes the four and the five, so we can keep going. Four now lives in one of two places in box six. I still don't know what this domino is though, I don't think. Seven's got to live up here. This column, look, we've got an awful lot of digits now. We need two, three, and five. So we'll put the options in and then have a think. That can't be two. With the two in one of those two cells. Uh, running out of ideas now. Um, That's not six. So there's there's a one in here. So that means two of the digits in this 19 cage sum to 10. Two more digits have to sum up to nine. Do we know anything about those? We know there's no Ah, ah, this circle now is interesting. Look, you can't put a two on this arrow anymore. That's gorgeous. Right, this is very clever, this puzzle. Now, if you can't put a two on this arrow, oh no, actually, I was about to say that's a problem. If this is not a one, but I'm not sure it is. Oh, well, what we can say is this can't be a one. Let's, let's prove it the other way around. This can't be a one, because then if I can't put a one or a two on this arrow, the minimum value for each square individually is three, therefore I'm getting to at least nine here, and I can't get to nine here, I know, but nine is most certainly broken. So the one does go on here. Which, ah, that means that's a 2-4 pair. And that fixes where 2 goes, doesn't it, in this box. I can't possibly put 2 in the circle. I can't make those 3 cells add to 2. So 2 is not in any of those squares and is here.
So now, what do I need along here? I need three, four, and seven. I'd be quite surprised if I can put seven into this square. Um, what do I need? No, I can't. If I put seven here, this square has to be a two, and it definitely can't be. So this is that gives me a seven over here, which gives me a seven there. How many sevens have I got in the grid? The answer is a great deal. That's a seven. And that's a seven. So now if this is a, th right, so we've got 10 here. This domino adds up to nine. So this is five or six. That seems possible. So perhaps we have to, we have to narrow down. Ah, uh, yeah, look. So I've got three, five, six, and eight left to place in this column. So I think this square looks like the, this can't be, obviously this can't be an eight because we're going to break the total of 10. I'm not sure it can be a six. Ah, but an interesting question, an interesting question to stop and ask now is where four goes. This four, there's definitely a four in this domino. So four could go in one of two places in box three. Well, it can't go there because three plus one plus one is five. So the four can only go here, which means this square is a five. And now we're just left with three, six and eight to place, I think. That can't be a three. If this is six, no, if this is six, you've got to go three, one, two, and that's cut, that's impossible. This is eight. So, ah, so this I think has to be six then because three, one, four doesn't work. So this is six and there's a double one on this arrow. And that's a three. Oh, and that's a five, good. And this square is a four or a six. Whoopsie, press the wrong button. Four or six. This is, ah, where does six go? Six goes here, okay. Four goes here, three goes here. Uh, we need four and nine into those squares. Don't know if we can do that yet, can't see how. And this is three and eight. Not sure if we can do that either. Um, ah, but this row looks very congested. We need three and six, do we? Yes. I feel like that should probably be resolved, but can't see how to do it. Um, this column, we've got almost all of it done. We just need five and eight in the, the base. Probably it's going to be this stuff now that we need to figure out. Still haven't got the one six figured out. Uh, this column maybe, let's just check it. We need three, four, five, six. Oh, okay. That's, oh, five. Yeah, okay, yeah. Where does five go in column seven? It's got to go here. And that gives us three, four, six into these squares and look yeah okay now how didn't i spot this before oh i should have just used this four once i know there's no four in these squares i can just lock four into the into the two four pair in the 30 cage i just didn't see it so this is not four anymore and these squares have got to be two three and six Five has got to be in this domino. It'll be interesting to see whether it can be on the arrow. Five. Oh, no, hang on, look. I've got two and three in this box. That's, I'm wondering whether to put pressure on the arrow or on the cage. I think I'm gonna put it on the cage. These three squares have to add up to 11 without using two or three. Well, one, four and five add up to 10. So we just need one, we can increase one of those digits by one, 
Well, given that you can't use two or three, the only way of doing that is going to be one, four, and six, and that is lovely. Um, I say it's lovely. Does it actually crack the puzzle? Yes. Well, it may not crack the puzzle, but it gives me a one here, which gives me a five here and a two here. That gives me the two and the three. We're still left with five, eight, and nine to place in this box. Right, we can rule five out of the arrow because this would be four, one, one, or something, but whatever it is is definitely higher than five. So this is eight or nine. Ah, lovely. Can we put four, six on the arrow? No, that adds up to ten. So the one must go here. And now probably we can, well, we can instantly rule out five from this square because that's going to make this add up to 10 again. So this is five, this is two. Five must go here in box seven, therefore. That's lovely, that gives us five and eight over here and four and six and four. And the, so this is seven at the moment. This needs to be one or two and it can't be two. Oh, so it's, we get two double one six arrows, do we? Well, apparently we do. That's that's quite cool symmetry, isn't it? Look at that. Um, this is one, this is six. That's got to be a two, therefore. This has got to be three or six. I'm sure this is all resolved over here, but I haven't just figured out where to focus. Nine and eight go in, eight and three go in, three and six go in, six and three go in. This square's a nine, this is a six. Uh, six must go here by Sudoku, nine goes here by Sudoku. Let's get rid of those two sixes. We've got three and four here, which is resolved by the four and the three. That should be a three. We still need an eight, and I think that's looking good. Let's click tick, yes. Wonderful puzzle, really, really elegant. I love the break-in, even though I got it in the wrong order. Uh, I love this 25 idea along this diagonal. Yeah, and this 20 was special. The way it sort of, it limited the value of this square to being two, four in order to not crack this square with a seven, eight, nine triple in the 29 cage and the co and column three. Very cute indeed. I'm sure there was a better way of me muddling through what I did up there um, but I muddled through it anyway um, so thank you so much for watching do let me know in the comments how you got on um, and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic